I I love I love campaigns. I I cannot lie. I love campaigns. But are there different types of campaigns? I mean, are there are there different ways of handling different types of campaigns? Are certain GMs suited for some types of campaigns, but not the other type of campaign? Am I suited for only one type of campaign and not the other types of campaigns? How many types of campaigns are there? Ah, uh, we'll find out now. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How To Be A Great GM. We're talking campaign types. Now, I have spent a large amount of my role-playing career thinking about campaigns and how to run campaigns. Running a successful adventure is in itself a major reward, and when your players get to the end of the adventure, everyone should be satisfied and feel as if they've done a good job. Running a campaign, which is a series of collected adventures that describe a whole bigger narrative of some kind, is a much bigger challenge, not only because you as the game master have to have the stamina to run the entire duration of it, but also because we're humans and real life gets in the way and people come and people go and that's what it is. But the more I thought about campaigns, the more I realized that there are different types of campaigns, not just they, oh, well, it's a collection of adventures. And each of the different types of campaigns, in my opinion, warrant a different approach to how you're playing it, have different strengths and weaknesses, and certain types of GMs actually fit better in some types of campaigns and not others. How is this useful? Well, I think it's useful in terms of saying, well, if you're this type of GM, don't try and run that type of campaign. Or at least, if you want to stretch yourself, try and do it, but be aware you're going to struggle. Anyway, those are my that's, that's the preamble to this particular video. That was kind of going through my head when I was thinking about what video I should talk about this week. And that's, that's, that's what happened. Um, and uh, so what are the four different types of campaign? Well, as far as I'm concerned, you have the epic campaign. And I use that word specifically, the epic campaign. And that is where it's the PCs versus in a singular antagonist. The PCs are fighting against that giant dark evil force and they will eventually triumph at the end of the campaign or fail miserably. It's a grand story that will take months or years to play out, but the PCs will eventually defeat the antagonist. The antagonist is present throughout the entire campaign in one shape or form or another, makes sporadic entrances here and there. And yes, there are lots of other adventures that are packed into that campaign, but generally speaking, you have planned out a series of adventures, of events that you're going to be triggering that will lead to the downfall of this big, bad, evil character at the very end. My entire YouTube channel has been around this type of campaign because this is the type of campaign I like to run. So that's epic campaigns. You then get open campaigns. This is one that I have never been able to run personally because I have a tendency to want to link things together and as a result to create a big bad at the very end. An open campaign is where you are running a series of adventures that don't have anything to do with each other, but in which the characters all feature. So if you will look at TV series from the 1980s, or actually from the beginning of television all the way through to the late 2000s, as a matter of fact, okay, let me be a little bit more generous, the early 2000s, most TV series were open campaigns. It was the same characters and they were going about their daily lives and each week they went on a different adventure and they had different adversaries who had no links to each other and all was good. In other words, it's just a bracketed space in which these PCs go through their lives. There's nothing wrong with that. The third type of campaign is the player campaign, where the campaign is focused specifically on the player characters. Unlike an open campaign where it's free for all and anything could happen, there might be some character story, there might be no character story, the player campaign is where it is focused just on the players. It is their rise, their goal, their dreams, their objectives. The player character has got a strong backstory and they really want to avenge their father and um, go on this giant quest and rescue the world. That's a player-based campaign. 
very different focus from an open campaign or from an epic campaign. And I think it's a very... Well, you'll see what the problems are that arise with each of these moving on. Player campaign has one of the most dangerous ones, but they all... Eh, we'll get there. All right, and then the last one is the accidental campaign. This is where it's like, hey guys, we've been playing about eight or nine adventures now, and it's all been the same characters. We haven't swapped, we haven't changed, we haven't done anything. I haven't planned this to be a bigger thing. It's just kind of happening and growing, and, well, here we go. It's, um, well... It is what it is. It's kind of like, um, to a large degree, movie franchises that have just suddenly spawned a whole bunch of other movies. And you go, well, does this have anything to do with that one? No, but we needed a prequel, so we just made it. Literally, these things come out of nowhere and they just start emerging. Does this count as an actual campaign? You never planned for it, but it's just happened. It does count as a campaign and it does require a specific type of GM in order to achieve it. And that has certain pitfalls as well. Before we go into those pitfalls, however, we're going to talk about the strengths of each campaign. So the epic campaign, the strength of the epic campaign is that your initial planning phase should be fairly structured, especially if you watch this video. I have whole videos on how to design your campaign using the various tables that I have created that help you structure your campaign, which are available, by the way, on our website, free to download. That's www.greatgamemaster.com. Go to the Great Library and in there you'll find the Bag of Holding and inside the Bag of Holding you'll find the forms that will allow you to design your campaign for an epic campaign. There's a structure to it. So what that means is, is that one of its strengths is that the campaign will always move forward. It always has a goal and you as the GM know where you are within that narrative structure. It is a very narrative driven game. It's very cinematic. And at the end of it, if you do it right, your players will sit back and go, this was a mind blowing journey and we defeated the most powerful evil thing in the universe and we are awesome. That's a big strength, in my opinion, and one of the reasons why I realize I have kind of focused specifically on that type of campaign style. The open campaign style now, however, that is quite a different story in terms of its strengths. So an open campaign is very versatile. It is agile. It is dynamic. It is all of the buzzwords that corporations love to hear when they're being sold creative briefs. What I mean by versatile, agile, dynamic is that an open campaign, there is no big bad. There are just lots and lots and lots of very bads that the characters are going to defeat. This means that this week the characters are defeating this type of monster. Next week it's that kind of evil. The week after it's another different type of evil and so on. That allows you to react as the players go oh that was so cool what we did last week you can go okay cool more of that coming up or oh yeah i didn't really like last week's one it was too political great dropped the political we're never going to do political again we're now moving on to gladiator fights you can be much more reactive to how your players like to play in an open campaign than you can in a epic campaign because obviously the epic campaign you have planned beforehand now that's not to say you can't adjust your epic campaign this is role playing you can adjust at any point in time only you know what your plan was originally and originally however an open campaign is far more amiable to that kind of thing because you don't set anything up nothing links to anything else and so you know there's there's less stuff to untangle a player-based campaign, in terms of its strengths, is all about emotion. It's intense. It's about a character's journey. So the players are far more likely to be invested in this type of game because it is their story. It really is their story. So you've got a lot more of the, the, the player's investment, the player's personalities coming through and their character personalities of course driving the story you are going to be listening to how those people are responding to their characters going through these journeys and you're going to be working closely with their backstories to see how to drive the story forward you're constantly going to be giving them npcs who ask them what are your life goals what are you going to be doing now and so your focus is then playing off of them the strength of this particular type of campaign, aside from the fact that your players are going to be hugely engrossed in this whole story, is that they are the ones that are really doing all of the hard work in terms of what their characters want to do. All you're doing is saying, okay, well, his character wants to become a dwarf, or is a dwarf, and wants to become the thane of all dwarves, wants to become 
the leader of all dwarves. Well, okay, we need to start setting up some political things. We need to start giving them the opportunity to get to that place. We need to set up some adversaries for them. In other words, they are creating four or five little mini campaigns within that, each one focused on the player. That's a big strength. It really is interesting to see how other people put things together. And you're going to get a campaign that is broad spectrum in terms of all different kinds of adventures, depending on each of the players. With an accidental campaign, the strength is that there is absolutely no compulsion whatsoever to do anything of any particular type. There's no expectation. And as a result, your campaign can be as long or as short as you like. It's very similar to the open campaign in terms of you are running a villain every episode. But at the same time, you can pick and choose. You can go, well, I think this is going to be more the player journey this week. Next week or the next month, we're going to do uh, three adventures which relate to one big bad. And then the week after that, I don't care. I'm not going to plan that. And you just go with the flow and you end up where you end up. There is no initial plan. There's no restriction in terms of where you can go with that. So that's a major strength. Now, obviously, that leads us to the major weaknesses that come along with these things, and they all have some pretty big weaknesses. You need to be aware of them. The weakness of Epic Campaign, obviously, is it's potentially railroady. If you want the player characters to have to defeat the giant orbital space station, which can destroy planets, they kind of have to get to a point where they can destroy the giant orbital space station. In other words, you're going to have to set up adventures that allow them to get to a position where they could destroy that orbital space station. If you don't, as the GM, the campaign is never going to end and it could possibly fail. So that railroad element starts to creep in where the players can sit back and go, well, in the first few adventures, we learned that the big bad was this giant emperor dude who lives on an orbital space station. So we're fairly certain that in a year's time or two years' time, we will get to a point where we will be defeating this evil menace. There's a meta that starts to come in. It's a strength in terms of them wanting to anticipate how they're going to overcome this person, etc., 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 but it is also a weakness. They know where it's going, hopefully. Uh, you'll twist and turn and, you know, all that wonderful magic and stuff, but there is an element of railroading to the epic campaign you need to be aware of that. It also requires constant realignment and adjustment as your big plan, which you planned out before the game even started, is torn apart by the player characters doing weird and wonderful things. You constantly have to go back and adjust going, well, this was the big bad is an orbital space station, but in, in, in the third adventure, they actually caused it to blow up because they did something really clever. Obviously, the Big Bad was not on the orbital space station at the time because he was having his nails done on the planet's surface, and so he can come back and fight them later on. But you now have to adjust your campaign accordingly to fit. An open campaign, on the other hand, that wouldn't be a problem. Well, they killed a Big Bad. Yeah, for this adventure. Next adventure, there's another one who comes up. It's the beautician who's lost a very valuable client and now wants to find out why uh, the sales are down. You can go in any direction you like, so that is not a weakness. A weakness of open campaign or play, for example, I would say, is that if there is no overarching antagonistic force, if there is no bigger picture, if it's just a constant series of um, adventures, the adventures might be fun, but after a while, the players might start to go, I, I don't feel like we've got purpose. I, I actually want to play a different character, I think. Because the, play, the PC, although they're advancing in level, or whatever the mechanic or the role-playing system you're using, although they are advancing mechanically, from a narrative perspective, they're not really doing anything. Most computer games are an open campaign. Now, don't confuse that with open world gaming and all that kind of stuff. By open campaign, of course, I'm literally meaning you do a, 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 an adventure and you move on to the next adventure, you move on to the next adventure, you move on to the next adventure. Those are in, in things like Skyrim um, and the like, where there isn't a huge impact on the universe based on what the characters are doing. Epic, of course, is where that's structured and railroaded, such as things like Mass Effect or Dragon Age, those kinds of stories. So open can cause the players to lose interest after a while because there isn't some kind of bigger picture at play here. Player weakness campaigns, of course, is what if the player leaves? You've built the entire campaign around them getting to the point where they have a castle. 
And the player goes, listen, I'm sorry, I've been transferred. Or, you know, I've got to go to my grandmother's bachelor party and, and that's it. Sorry, I, I can't play for the next six months because she throws amazing parties. You figure out the scenario, but if the player leaves, your campaign is going to suffer. You also will find it very difficult if you have player characters who go, ah, I'm bored with this character, I'm going to play a new character. Yeah, but for, for a year and a half, we've been building up to your 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 dwarf buying his his hairdressing salon and becoming an, an, a, a, a manicurist and, and now you're just dropping that and you're bringing in an elf who wants to become a rock star could work could work I'm not saying that you can't get around these difficulties but these weaknesses by the way it could work but it's breaking the entire thing so that's a big weakness for the player um, campaign style now the accidental campaign style what's his biggest weakness simply that there is no structure at all the players don't know where it's going from one point to the next there's no uh, sense of progression uh, an open campaign is very similar admittedly in this case with um, the accidental campaign but also because there is not even a sense of well it's this type of of campaign or it's that type of campaign players quite literally will most likely go well I, I'm, I'm enjoying it but we can play other stuff too and we probably have just as much fun so the accidental campaign runs a risk of, because there is no sense of campaign, it actually doesn't last. And it sort of wobbles and dissipates and dissolves into a gray mush. So that is a, a major difficulty. Now, finally, but before I get to the last point, if you found this video useful or insightful or vaguely stimulating, hit that like button. And share the video with your friends if you want to try and encourage them to play a campaign the question was asked on our discord channel discord.gg forward slash great i think i mentioned that at the beginning of the video but it was so long ago i've forgotten you know old age and all that um this question was asked by the way on that discord channel how do i help get my gm to realize that my character i'm bored playing my character because my character is not advancing my character is not growing my character is not seeing their quests done well, that is because I believe the GM is running an epic campaign and is not focused on the player's stories whatsoever, whereas the player wants a player campaign. So it's important for us, I think, to critically understand what type of campaign our players want to play in and then give that to them. It's important that we play a campaign that we want to play as well. I love epic campaigns and people who join my games generally realize that that's the kind of campaign they're going to be getting. I've realized in making this video that I'm going to change that. Next time, I'm going to be doing a player campaign. I think that could be very interesting um, in terms of refocusing my efforts completely. Uh, stretch yourself, as they say. All right, so what type of GM should be running what type of campaign? This is very subjective, I must admit. But again, I think it is... In, in my opinion, helpful and uh, will hopefully push you to change, like myself. Epic campaigns. Epic campaigns are, well, there's no shadow of a doubt. You need to be cinematic. You need to be big picture kind of GM where you can put together this large concept based on all of the tables and things that uh, you have downloaded from our website. I'm not going to go through those all over again. But you have a big picture mentality. You have the sense of reordering things as things change, as things collapse. You can do all of that kind of stuff. It's not a problem. And you think from a cinematic perspective because the story, the plot, all of that is the, the primary motivator, the primary driver. So that, I think, is the type of GM that you need to be in order to run an epic campaign. In order to run an open campaign, you need to have strong adventures. In an epic campaign, you can have some adventures which are meh, but they're advancing the story, they're advancing the plot points, so they kind of have to happen. In open adventure, each adventure needs to be strong, solid, good, well-planned, because that is what the players are going through. They're living one adventure at a time. So if you're a GM who's really good at creating strong adventures, but not necessarily at creating strong, epic, giant campaigns, an open campaign is very, very, very much up your alley. If you are running a player-based game, then you need to make sure that you are invested in the player character's backgrounds. That means you need to research, you need to learn the character backgrounds, and you need to enjoy going through character backgrounds 
at discovering that stuff. You also need to be comfortable as the creator. You need to be emotionally aware of your player characters. Someone might have written in their backstory that their entire family was murdered when they were very young and that motivated them to go and become an orphan, which motivated them to go and um, steal. As the GM running a personal campaign, you might want to do a flashback where the kid is watching their family all being murdered. It is one thing to write in your backstory, my family were all tragically murdered when I was young, it's another to actually go and relive it and to have the GM pretending to be their father, their mother, saying things like, I love you, you must get out of here quickly, please, 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 don't, don't look back, don't look back. It's very emotionally intense because you are focused this entire campaign on that player character, on the player characters, all of the player characters, I should say, get attention, not just the one. Um, it can be emotionally intense. So you should also make sure that your players are interested in that and that you are capable of doing that as well. There's no point in running a player-based campaign if you cannot bring out the emotion because it's all about the emotion, it's about the player. Those are my thoughts on the different types of campaigns. Maybe I've left some out. I, I, simulationist campaign is, as far as I'm concerned, um, one that could have been included in this video. But at the same time, that's not what this channel's about. And I, I think that building a simulationist campaign, which is where it's the rules override everything else, and it's it's methodically planned out and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't like them. And and I'm not I'm not going to talk about something that I'm not passionate about. I think uh, maybe I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove to me that running a simulationist campaign that does not rely on the players succeeding, but that relies on the numbers and the players beating those numbers, is a form of of storytelling. Yes, it is. Yes, it is part of a role playing. And yes, now that I'm saying all of this, I'm realizing maybe I should have included simulationists simulationist campaign in this list. Um, but to be honest with you, I wouldn't, I, I don't know. I, 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 help me out. Comments down below. Put them, put them there. Let's talk about this type of thing. Clearly I have a prejudice against it. I need to work through that. Okay, so what a video. I need to work through my, um, um dislike of simulationism and I need to run a player-based campaign. Great. Okay, well I hope, I hope, I hope that in some way, these videos help you to have the same kind of epiphanies that I have um, and to think about them and to try and try and ratchet them up anyway. Today's video was brought to you by Lightfish Games, who are launching a brand new Kickstarter today, as a matter of fact. Now, they have just written a new TTRPG called Farsight, and it is a science fiction game that is based on what they called an evolved 5th edition open SRD rule system. So if you're familiar with the good old favorite role-playing game of all time, 5th edition, you'll be able to adapt to Farsight. Now, I have had the opportunity to have a look at their quick start rules, which you can download from their website, link down below. And you can go and have a look at the Kickstarter, of course, and see all of the wonderful things going on in that Kickstarter. And I have to say, I'm impressed. The artwork is absolutely stunning. The rule set that they have updated and changed, you kind of go, hmm, that's interesting. I want to know more. Well, if you want to know more, have a look at these guys. Now, it's from the same house, if you like, the same group of individuals who brought us Brancolonia, that uh, wonderful Western style, fifth edition conversion as well. So if you like that, you definitely should have a look at Farsight. It's a bespoke universe that has been created for the system as well. And uh, like I said, it's absolutely stunning. You have seen pictures on screen as I speak. I am looking forward to seeing how this plays out. I love looking at science fiction games going, how have they handled this? How have they handled that? Now, if you've been following my Create Your Own uh, TTRPG series as well on this channel, um, you'll start to look at them in a different way. And I promise you, when you look at Farsight, you go, hmm, this is checking all of the boxes. So a big thank you to Lightfish Games for bringing us this week's episode, as well as for launching a new Kickstarter that we can all get behind. Until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And until then, happy gaming.